Hello, family. I'm Robin. I'm a real alcoholic. Hey, Robin. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Atlanta Step Up Society book study. The name of our group is Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. Let's open it with a moment of silence, followed by a serenity prayer. Serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We're still in the chapter two wives. And last week we talked about energy and we talked about fear. And uh, I'm not going to go in detail about what we talked about last week. I just want to kind of push forward so we can continue. But we got to remember that everything is energy. You know, even the best of religion and the best of science still agree that it has something to do or start from nothingness. It's kind of like transition. It's like transition. It's like the best way you can explain anything is to know that it came from nothing. Nothingness is the mystery. Nothingness is the secret. You know, if you think you, uh, I guess, I heard that like Confucius and those, uh, back in the day, they asked him, what would make a man wise? And his answer is, if he knows how to sit still in the field of nothingness. You know, in our day we say, most people who are successful only focus on what they know. Most people who aren't successful focus on everything. <laughs> now you do the math. If you know everything, you don't have nothing. Like me, I go to the barber shop, I don't know how to cut hair, so I'm not even going to talk about cutting somebody hair. You know what I'm trying to say? If I'm in uh, 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 Macy's, I'm not talking about how they do their productions. If I'm in a, uh, the IRS office, I'm not talking about how they run their office or how they do the IRS. In a thrift store, I know. This is what I do know. The 12 steps, I know. That's what I do know. So I'm not going to like leave my arena of the 12 step knowledge and go down to Morehouse and start teaching English because I know 12 steps. I'm going to stay in my zone. And that's kind of like how things really manifest in your life. If you stay in your zone, whether it be good or bad, it don't matter. The law not going to change for you. You're, you're a product of the law. You think bad thoughts, they're going to attract bad things to you. You think good, positive thoughts, it will attract good, positive things to you. The law don't change. This is not religion. This is spiritual laws. We learn a lot about religious uh, statements or scriptures. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about spiritual law. The laws of attraction. Negative energy attract negative energy and situation. Positive energy attract positive situations and positive things. That's just it. The law don't change. Gravity don't change. Whether you jumping off three feet or you jumping off 3,000 feet, you're going to fall down. You're not going to float up. The law don't change. That makes sense? All right. Then that's what they're doing. They're giving, when they say principles, principles are stuff like you can't really, you can't really, um, let me see what I can say. You cannot really comprehend things when you're talking about spir uh, uh, spirituality or you're talking about uh, principles. This, you can't really define them. You're talking about honesty. See, and honesty, you can define it, but it's going to go bigger than what you can define. Define. You know, we can talk, honesty can go forever and ever and ever and ever. It goes beyond the senses, beyond what you can hear, taste, smell, touch. You can be as honest as you want for infinity. You cannot put it in a, in a bottle and say, I'm going to save you some honesty. It won't happen. 
Even when you talk about God, if you put God in a box, you're limiting God. It's indefinite. It's for infinity. For infinity. It just go and go and go. You can't, it transitions. You cannot put it in a box. So when we talk about the 12 steps, we're talking about making a man. You can make a man forever. Life-giving amends. You don't go and say, okay, I've been, a, I've been a drunk in this family for 25 years. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> you can make a man. You can, you know, you be, your life has to become an man. You do this forever. You know, infinity. You know, and, and example, so, so when they're giving out these spiritual principles, and they're talking about spiritual plane and spiritual principles, they're talking about something that can just go forever. That makes sense. It's not small. All right? So let's start on page 116 where it says, We have elsewhere remarked. All right, Paul. We have elsewhere remarked how much better life is when lived on a spiritual plane. God can solve the age-old riddle of alcoholism and can solve your problems too. We wives found that like everybody else, we were <clears throat> afflicted with pride, self-pity, vanity, and all the things which go to make up the self-centered person. And we were not above selfishness or dishonesty. As our husbands began to apply spiritual principles in their lives, we began to see the desirability of doing so too. All right, it says that we have elsewhere remarked somewhere down before they, they told us how much life, how much better life is when lived on a spiritual plane. So I took the liberty of studying spiritual plane, you know, and what spirituality means to me. But for the 12 step purpose, our spiritual plane is working the 12 steps. You have to do that first. All right. Each step is an ego deflator. It's an ego deflator. Every time you do a step or work through the step, you deflate your ego to a, a level of humility. That makes sense? So, I went, out, I went and pulled out a few, there's one little page off the, um, off the internet about spiritual plane. All right, now this is what I pulled out. There's a lot of stuff you can gather about spirituality that's on the internet. So you don't have to like not know anything today. <laughs> you can Google it. And Google is kind of the brain, our human brain and the Google system or the search system is identical. All you got to do is say what? What is spiritual plane? Bam! You know what is recovery? Bam! What does it feel like to be clean and sober? Bam! The answer is going to come. It'll come to you if you know how to speak it into existence from your own mind. That makes sense. You ask the questions that you want to answer for, and the answer will come. Just that simple. All right, let me read something that has to do with spiritual plane. And then we're going to go right back to the book. All right. It says, in the physical world, this off the internet, different rates of vibration result in different kind of effects. But vibrations that are high on the physical may be low on the spiritual. In the spiritual dimension, negative energy is lower vibration because it is denser and heavier. In the spiritual plane, Negative energy is lower. Alright. It's going to explain it. Positive energy is higher vibration because it is finer and lighter. All negative energy makes you feel trapped and heavy. Positive energy makes you feel free and light. The difference is the different that is the difference between joy and grief, peace and stress, clarity and frustration. Sometimes when I think about negative energy, I think about uh, people always worried about this and worried about that and 
always living a, 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 a position of lack of and uh, claiming illness and stuff, they kind of look jewelry. You know what I'm trying to say? They kind of look down. Then you got a kid, a little child, two, three years old, ain't worried about nothing. <laughs> they run around, but not a problem in the world. They got more spiritual energy than I would if I was walking around in a, in a ball of uh, worriness and fear and frustration. Does that make sense? Yeah. Who it would be the most spiritual if you walked up on me in depression and a kid playing happy, joyous, and free? Who would be the most spiritual, me or him? And I go to church every Sunday. The baby. The baby. He's working on a higher, positive vibration. Somewhere they say you got to be like a little kid to get in. Uh. <laughs> All right, it says negative energy is emotional burden while positive energy, energy is emotional freedom. Emotions are truly spiritual in nature. <clears throat> it is important to know that energy attracts more energy of the same kind. That's what the Bible says. Like equals like. Plants, tomato plant gonna have to yield what? Tomato plants. All right. Positive emotions attract more positive emotions when negative emotions attract more negative emotions. Energy on the spiritual plane, here it is, spiritual plane. Energy on the spiritual plane will also attract corresponding scenarios, the situations. On the physical plane. So what they're saying is that whatever you're thinking on the spiritual plane will manifest in your physical world. Feeling positive will result in more good things happen to you as you are charmed or magnetic toward blessings. It said when you're feeling positive, more good things going to happen to you because it attracts good things in your physical existence. Feeling negative will lead to more undesirable things happening as you are cursed or can't seem to help can't seem to help pulling bad things into your life. Seem like you just cursed. When you're always feeling negative or something like that, you just seem like you cursed because you can't help but to pull bad things into you. Because light attracts lightness. It says that, go down here, anything that is truly negative subtracts energy. Otherwise, it can be considered positive in one way or another. Good thoughts also attract good situations in your life, while bad thoughts attract bad situations. The stronger the thoughts, the stronger the emotions. When you change your thoughts, you change everything. When you change your thoughts, you change everything. It is by this power, here's a promise. We talk about promises in our program. It is by this power that the forces of life are transformed from one condition to another. I call them states or condition. If you got a, 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 a condition over here and it's not too good, if you change your thoughts, change your energy, you can transform that con condition over to another condition that's healthy. All by cause of the mind. It says that it is by this power that the forces of life are transformed from one condition to the next. Magic is the mental manipulation of quantum forces to reshape the reality of each condition. The magic is to change your thinking and it will go into the subconscious field, a quantum field, which is spiritual field, Grab their molecules, am I right? And bring them out into a lump that's gonna be what you want. The most powerful force, here it is, the most powerful force of the mind is its ability to create, control, create. The most powerful force of the mind 
is his ability to create, control, and change reality. This is the magic truth of life. Now here's the deal. The reason I did that because all through this book, when we read about the chapter about two wives, they have been giving these women some mind-changing thoughts. You have to have patience. You cannot be angry. Don't be resentful. Uh, uh, don't talk about him. Don't argue with him. There's some, there's some things that what they're doing is setting the, the, the playground for if they can start doing half of that stuff, they can start attracting good stuff. They don't want them to be walking around in the lower vibrations of energy all the time. That's what they're saying. But if you don't have nobody that can unlock the mystery, you, we don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they're, they're telling them. I said, why are you telling them? You, you know you got to argue, because I was on the arguing level myself. You know what I'm saying? He doing her wrong, yeah, because I'm doing wrong. But what these women did, they have these, these women who had the alcoholic husbands, had the experience with those husbands, they had to rise above them problems, get back on some healthy energy. And so when they see the other ones coming in, they're telling them, don't do this, don't do that, don't say this, don't do that, follow this principle, don't do that. It was a lot of them. But they can get rid of half of them, like I said, they will rise up to a better condition. The same as in recovery. When guys and women come into recovery for the first time, and they in recovery, and they've been out in the street, they vibrate real low. Like a tank. Slow and low. Heavy, heavy depressed. Heavy, heavy uh, low self-esteem. Heavy into self-pity, you know what I'm saying? Shame and guilt. Them are low vibrations. If you stay there, don't raise your hand to share in here. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Go the way out. You know? Well, my, I'm just playing, you know. But, but, but my thing is, you got to come up out of that. You know, and a lot of people don't understand it. See, if you have the, the uh, you know, like Jacob Ladder or a scale, you know, AA will operate, let's say if you went from zero being death, fear and suicide and all that down at 100. You know what I'm trying to say? 200 maybe get a little better, and then you know, all the way up to bliss, happy, joyous, and free, to the top. And it was in increments of 100. When AA operated on 400, so you come into AA, there's hope in AA, you know what I'm trying to say? If you don't have no hope, you come in here and hang around, you're going to get some hope. You know, so AA operate on 400. AA. Alcoholics and non operate on 400. Now you come on 100. You stay around here and you don't do no work. You don't do no steps. You'll start feeling better. You might get up to 200. Just for hang around the AA program. But you're not at 400 because you ain't did no work. You ain't got no sponsor. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Complain about every meeting. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But you feel better because you got some claim time. So you operate at a 200. But AA is at a 400. So what happens is, in your mind, since you don't hear some stuff and you're doing great sharing, you know what I'm saying? You'll now become a professional sharer. <laughs> so you think that you are 400. But it is a 400. You still a 200. When you start going to meeting, and you whip your and get your apartment and a car, the 200 show up. <laughs> and since you ain't been working on yourself, you're going to not work on yourself. The 200 going to slip to 150. 150 going to slip to 100, and you back out there. That's what we talk about spiritual energy. That makes sense? All right, so with that the spiritual plane. We have asked what we mark how much better life is when lived on a spiritual plane. If God can solve the age-old riddle of alcoholism, he can solve your problems too. The deal with that is, you got to go back and think about alcoholism. Until the 1930s, 
Most people that were true alcoholics like me, they just died. There was no real help for it. They lock you up somewhere and throw away the key. Not thinking that there's rubber alcohol in there. You know what I'm saying? All kind of stuff that got alcohol in the hospital. You can throw away your key if you want to. I'm just as happy in here as I am out there. Now you're just feeding me and taking care of me, but alcohol is around. So my point is, God did us a favor by put, putting AA into the existence when it did. Or we all be in darkness. He had to. Can you imagine if nobody got clean and sober? Nowhere? 2014? If he can, if God can solve the old age riddle of alcoholism, he can solve your problems too. I tell my family all the time, and I tell people that, you know, when I get an opportunity, I know where I was. I know how much alcohol and drugs I did in my life. And by the power of the grace of God, God and y'all and this program can take that away from me. There is nothing I cannot do. I don't believe I will fail in anything because if I can get out of that, everything else is easy. Everything else is simple and easy. It's a cake and, you know, piece of cake. Easy walk. If you can put down alcohol and crack, and heroin and homelessness and, and, and all that and then clean in here and you sad, something wrong. Because <laughs> you can do anything. You just don't give yourself the power and then you don't know how to do it then. Because uh, it's written in here. You ain't supposed to be like that. Then it goes on to say, we wise found that like everybody else, we were infected with pride self-pity, vanity, and all the things which go to make up the self-centered person. What they started doing was looking at their own defects. And every one of those are negative pockets of emotional energy. Pride, self-pity, vanity, and all the things that go to make up a self-centered person. And what they're saying right there, if you are self-centered, then you have a lot of different negative thinking and emotion that put it all together that created that self-centered person. So you got all that going on, then everything come to you is going to come self-centered. You're going to be in conflict with everybody. If you went to the four step, it said you were in conflict with everything, in a collision. Right. It was in a collision with everybody. Because I'm self-centered, I don't care about nobody but me. The next person I do business with is going to be just like me. I'm doing business with myself. It's going to be war. It has no choice. Ain't no nice person going to come up to me and you know, sit down and do a nice, uh, honorable contract with me. I'm a self-centered SOB. So what the one sitting in front of me is? Same thing. I just attracted him. Oh, he attracted me. We one big happy self-centered fool. You know, that's the way it is. So you know when it don't work right, you, we can blame each other. Go find someone else to be sitting in front of and be self-centered with. Because that's what we do. It says that and we were not above selfishness or dishonesty. They start looking at themselves. As our husbands began to apply spiritual principles in their life, we began to see the desirability of doing so too. The 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous is contagious. If you're working them in your life, it'll show up in your family. Some form or another. Not at different times, you know, not all at once, like, you know, been slain in the spirit or something, but it's going to come up. People start changing because they see the change in you. All right, Paul. At first, some of us did not believe we needed this help. We thought, on the whole, we were pretty good, good women, capable of being nicer if our husbands stopped drinking. But it was a silly idea that we were too good to need God. Now we try to put spiritual principles to work in every department of our lives. When we do that, we find it solves our problems too. 
The ensuing lack of fear, worry, and hurt feelings is a wonderful thing. We urge you to try our program, for nothing will be so helpful to your husband as the radically changed attitude toward him, which God will show you how to have. Go along with your husband if you possibly can. All right, remember our program is about cleaning up from the inside out, inside of our mind out. Getting rid of resentments, getting rid of uh, all those defects, you know, self-centered defects and stuff. Making amends, you know, doing confession. That's how our program is about. So it says right here, at first, none of us did not believe we needed this help. And, you know, I, I see people all over, you know, since I've been doing 12 steps a lot and trying different spiritual things, I'm always trying something spiritually new to enhance my life, enhance, enhance my growth. And I, I do know this. I've been in recovery long enough to know that 80% of the people I run across or meet and have any con conversation with, any dealing with, they need the 12 step back. <laughs> I see it, you know, and all the time. If they were all through my family, everywhere. If y'all would just work the 12 steps, you wouldn't be having all the same problems. I see it, you know, because I'm living to the best of my ability a spiritual life. You know, nobody perfect, but I can see my own defect, and I wish some other people would see theirs. It's hard to convince someone that they are. Uh, now, let me just do this. It's easier to fool someone than to convince someone he's a fool or he's been fooled. So. It's easy for me to try to figure out a way to convince someone to look at what part they play than to tell them that you played it wrong. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear that. So you have, to, you have to learn how to tactfully get it over so they can respond and look at what part they play. Because you can't tell nobody they were wrong. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. It says that we thought on the whole we were pretty good women, capable of being nicer if our husbands stopped drinking. So, if people think that they can change on, from outside situations for themselves, that makes sense? They think that, and I know I have done it for years, if only this got better, I would be better. Mm -hmm. If only I wasn't driving this old messed up car right here and I got me a better car, I feel better. It, a good one is the job. Boy, if I just got me a better job, my life would be so much better. Not once did anybody teach me or did I know that I need to change me. I need to look inside of me, change my thinking, change my life, withdraw some of those negative uh, uh, energy emotions and replace them with some higher energy emotions. So that's the God in me. Nobody told me to fix the God in me. You know, if I would just fix this, 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 and this, I'm going to be happier. Even if I got that what I wanted, my ego wanted me to get something bigger. I was never satisfied by fixing stuff outside of myself. It don't work. Capable of being nice if our husband stopped drinking. Some husbands, as soon as they stopped drinking, they left. How much nicer are you now? <laughs> I'm just saying. It's a prime example of getting nicer if he, if he stopped drinking. <laughs> it said that, but it was a silly idea that we were too good to need God. I hear one of my friends, he always talks about how he has a, the best analogy that I ever heard about how people try to be good to get to heaven. You know what I'm saying? They might do some good stuff for a, a month. Real good. I mean, in order to be really, really good, you might well just stay at home, close the door, lock the door, have your food ordered, don't turn on no TV, no radio, and please don't pick up a smartphone. Don't get no Facebook, no Twitter, no nothing. You might be good. But you walk outside that door, it's over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
So as soon as it's over, here you are, you're back in the press. You know what I'm saying? You're back down, you feel like you're a sinner, all them low emotions come on you. Some businesses make a lot of money keeping people low. Mm. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, step don't. We want you to feel the best you can feel. That's why we give you these steps so you can get up out of that low kind of uh, negative emotions. Nobody wants you like that. You know what I'm saying? It says, now we try to put spiritual principles to work in every department of our lives. When we do that, see, if let's say if you are, uh, remember I'm talking about transitional type uh, things, if you was practicing honesty, and I mean gut honesty, where you just really, no, integrity, how that? Integrity, where you just want to be good, nice to people, caring, you know, and I'm going to be the best me I can be. That's integrity. So, let's say you want to, you can practice that in every department of your life. You can practice with your kids. You can practice with your dog. You know what I'm trying to say? You can practice it at work. You can go to grandma's house and practice it. You can go to your parents' house and practice it. You can practice that forever. There's nothing wrong with that. You got a dog at home, you know that dog need to be walked. But you watching TV, right? <laughs> you watching TV, you know that dog need to go out. That dog wagging the tail up, up the door. And you talking about sit down. You know that dog want to go outside and play. But that's what dogs do. So integrity will be, I know that dog wants to go. I'm supposed to take that dog, but I'm going to watch this reality. Why, how, why stuff? <laughs> so the dog has to suffer. See what I'm saying? But you can practice it. You know what you're supposed to do here. 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 And you just do it. There's nothing wrong with it. You can do that forever. And that's what creates the happiness in you. That's where the heaven comes. From doing the best you can do from inside yourself. That make, yeah, that's it. There's nothing else. When we do that, we find it solves our problems too. The ensuing lack of fear, worry, and hurt feelings is a wonderful thing. What that word means is, these, that this are the stuff that come after. If you want to feel wonderful, when you uh, pass your your fear, you got lack of fear. You're not afraid no more. You know, you're not afraid of bill collectors no more. You're not afraid of the IRS no more. You're not afraid of, uh, uh, of things no more. You're not worried no more. You don't have hurt feelings no more. People say something to you. And you just let it go because you got internal peace. That make you know you got internal peace in you. You feel good about you. I don't have to wear your mess no more. So when you get past that or beyond that, it's a wonderful thing. So if it's a wonderful thing and you feel good about it, you just spiritually jumped up on the energy thing. Your spirituality rose. It be like the little kid playing. It's a wonderful day. The kid don't have no, don't worry about a lack or something. He know he gonna eat. He ain't afraid about uh, 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 of the pit bull two blocks down the street because he's in a safe environment in his own house. You know, he don't have to worry about the native hurt feelings and this and that because he's at home and he's protected. So he feels wonderful. Who don't want to feel wonderful? If you came from where I came from, I know I have to feel wonderful. Cause I'm a, I am addicted to wonderfulness. That's my new addiction. I'm gonna feel wonderful. I am not relapsing out of that one. I ain't relapsing out of feeling good. Dude, when I do these meetings, it makes me feel good. I ain't relapsing from doing no meeting. I'm gonna always do it. Cause it gives my spirit out there uplift. That's what it's for. You're supposed to feel good. As a human being, you're supposed to be happy. I know it don't always be like that. I know. I don't been in bad relationships. I don't been in driving home and keep right on by the house. <laughs> oh, no. I know. Because <laughs> I don't want to feel bad. Y'all you know, feel too good to get up out of this car. Keep on going. You know what's over there? Toxic. It's poison. You know? 
We urge you to try our program, for nothing will be so helpful to your husband as the radically changed attitude toward him which God will show you how to have. Go along with your husband if you possibly can. They want to encourage the wives. They're like, take, take, do the 12 steps with them. See what it feels like to be free of resentment. You know, and I can understand that because I always have been around. My family had a lot of women in it. And before I knew anything about resentment, I did know if one got mad with the other one, that's two years before they say anything. <laughs> that's a good two years. You know, I done seen it happen in my family. You know, wouldn't it be nice if they all did a full step and learn how to make amends and then come up to a 10 step every time a situation come up that you don't have to hold no grudge for a year? Because the only thing that hurt uh, about resentment and holding grudges is the one who keep it is the one that's affected. Like your uncle said the other day, you know, it's, it's like the holding resentment is like if I got resentment against you, it's like me drinking the poison and thinking I'm going to hurt you. It only hurts the person that holds the resentment because everything is energy. And that negative energy in you brings you spiritually down to the lower vibration. Since you're on the lower vibration, you go, let's say you go to you go to the grocery store and you got all these resentments in you and resentments create anger, right? Right. Anger and resentment right in the same little bucket. So you go to the grocery store, you already got this energy with you and you see somebody arguing and fussing, you have to go over there and see what's going on. And you're going to take sides, you know, which one is the best, which one you think going to win, you jump in it too. Now you got that energy, so it attracts all that. Other people walk on about it or, or, or say something or try to say, you know, you all shouldn't be doing that. But that energy on that level, we join in. Then we get, leave the thing, leave the grocery store, get on the cell phone and start calling folk about what just happened. <laughs> you know? Most people, if they're not on that level vibrating, they'd be like that commercial where the, the guy wants some help and one guy, the little lady, pretend she had a cold, <laughs> I can't help you. The other one on the beach, talking about, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sick in the hospital over here on the beach, you know? They don't want to hit. That's the bottom line. They don't want to hit, because they already know. Same thing happened in our business. People who call all the time about, gotta, gotta, gotta get the donation. You gotta get it here. You gotta, I need you to pick up right now. You gotta come and get these donations right now. We already know what level they might be on. The trash level. <laughs> trash, that's trash. That's pure garbage, y'all. Somebody <laughs> really donate something that's nice and love, they don't go through that. <laughs> that's what we'll love for you to come get this. I have a beautiful sofa. You ain't gotta call back no more. The dollar, 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 garbage, 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 garbage. <laughs> 90% of the time, that's any driver. Yep. <laughs> All right. God will show you how. Next one, Paul. If you and your husband find a solution for the pressing problem of drink, you are, of course, going to be very happy. But all problems will not be solved at once. Seed has started to sprout in a new soil. But growth has only begun. In spite of your newfound happiness, there will be ups and downs. Many of the old problems will still be with you. This is as it should be. All right, this is the real life problem. They're getting into real life now. All right. It says that if you and your husband find a solution for the pressing problem of drink, you are, of course, going to be very happy. Now, husband is getting clean and sober and working on the 12 steps and the wife is working on the 12 steps. There's going to be some happiness there. You're going to improve. You're going to feel better. You're going to see this happiness. It said, but all problems will not be solved at once. This is not no microwave program. You're not going to be like you put popcorn or coffee in a microwave. It's not going to get hot instantly here. 
it's going to take some time and some growth. I found after a lot of years of being clean and sober that I know when I die, I'm still not going to be where I, I want to be. Now I understand more more about the scripture, how they never got to the, the, the lands or, or the places that they dreamed the vision because the human body not going to get there. But the mind and the imagination will. Does that make sense? So you, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get there. So it's always gonna be something for me to grow, an area that I can grow in, and it always shows up. It says that, you know, like, like, even now, I know that I have grown to a point in life where I really, really don't like, like negative uh, conversations. I, I try to stay out of because I know they attract more negative conversations, and in the people that work up there. They'll tell you, we try to stay as positive as we can, So, because we don't want that. You can't have that in the office place. That makes sense? Because it filters out of the office, which is supposed to be the, the brain of the operation, down through the whole system, all the way to the donor. So we try to keep a positive way, uh, way of thinking, and that's a must. It says that seed has started to sprout in a new soil, but growth has only begun. There is nothing worthwhile that don't have an incubation period. Nothing. Everything, and in order for a seed to grow, it must fall into the dirt and die. That makes sense. It must fall into the dirt and die. You can take a, a tomato seed and put it right here and come back 10 years from now, it's still right here. You take that same one seed, take it outside, Bury it in the dirt, let it die, the nutrients from the ground gonna come and it's gonna sprout and you're gonna have a tomato bush. That's the same thing with us. A half, when they say half measures avail us nothing, they're talking about holding on to that old stuff and not letting it die so new stuff can grow. So, and uh, else play talks about straddling the fence. Being lukewarm. Neither you cold or you hot. Neither you relapse, be a man about it. <laughs> be a recovery, be a man about it. Don't be lukewarm coming up here talking about some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, in spite of your newfound happiness, there will be ups and downs. I appreciate that though. I really enjoy that. First of all, I like the statement of having up and down, because all I used to have was downs. There was nothing up. Now I can experience up and down, that's growth for me. If I'm doing something and I'm so up, God has a way of shaking me and make me go down a little bit so I can start the journey back up. So it's kind of like this, all the time. Up and down, up and down. And I know if you've been in recovery any length of time, this is especially for newcomers. I'm going to break this down for you real good. A newcomer be on a pink cloud. I'm telling you, I've been there. And every two, two months, three months, everything going so good. You make all your meetings on time, you got your little job, you know what I'm saying? And you're running around here, and you meet friends, and you got your network. Everything is going good. And you have it. I used to have a little bag to do it. It's like, so I want to blew up a paper bag <laughs> and BAM! Busted! And then your ass hit. Boom! Then the whole body of them fell out on you. It's like, wow, what happened? I was doing real good. I ain't even talking about relapsing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Something happened. Something that happened and bust that boat. You say, damn, I wasn't as spiritual as I thought I was. <laughs> I know that happened to me. You know, I was going real good, and I got in a fight or cuss somebody out, you know, and I had to walk away from that situation. I was like, wow, I wasn't as spiritual as I thought I was. <laughs> now I got to get back in the groove, you know what I'm trying to say? And that happens. Yeah. And now everybody here done experienced that. Mm -hmm. You think you got it going on, and pow, that blood out balloon bust on you. Now right, that's them ups and downs. Many of the old problems will still be with you. They're like residue. I'm gonna change it for a minute. You know how you're smoking that thing? And the residue in there? 
when you got it pushing and struggling and all this kind of stuff, and it's still there, that's how recovery is. You coming out of the streets and stuff, that residue still on you. You still got it. You know, we got the, you know, your sponsor and people around you, that's good, clean you up real good. And like you still holding all that old stuff. You bring it into recovery with you. That's a known fact. Ain't nobody been washed clean coming here. You bring that insanity with you. And it takes some time to get that thing clean again. But that's, that's it. The old problem will still be with you. Here it is. This is as it should be. You should come in here like that. You should come in here like that. You're supposed to come in here with all that old insanity in you. It ain't went nowhere. Because you got a 30 day chip, 90 day chip. You're not Jesus. You know? You still slimy muddy. You know? Science will tell you that. Science can, how long does science get to detect in your hair cell how long you've been? Five years later, they still can pull up the drugs. It's still in your hair. It takes five years to get out of there. You go for a job and say, I'm cleaning this over. The boss man said, let me check your hair. You don't believe me? I don't know about today with the Obama plan. But when I got clean and sober, and I tried to get some insurance, health insurance, for the first five years, nothing. Because I went in St. Jude. St. Jude put me on the pathway. <laughs> and the pathway shot over to the hospitals. They said you were a drug, a drug addict, wasn't you? I, I ain't lie, I'm on you know. Yep. But we can't insure you. We do your wife. They wouldn't pick me up for five years. And then, y'all remember them? They did that. You know, like Kaiser and other places? Then from five to ten years, I had a higher premium to pay than she did. Then at the tenth year, I dropped down to normal people. But by then, I was ten years older. So we went back up. There's <laughs> <laughs> no win situation. You know, and I wasn't, see, I was self-employed. I didn't have no group plan. You know, like a, a hundred thousand people and working for a company. I had to get myself insured. That's what they did to me. That is. And that's the way it, that, it said, that is as it should be. There's nothing I can do about it. I'll keep running the gray in the VA. All right, the next one. The faith and sincerity of both you and your husband will be put to the test. These workouts should be regarded as part of, you, of your education. For thus you will be learning to live. You will make mistakes, but if you are in earnest, they will not drag you down. Instead, you will capitalize them. A better way of life will emerge when they are overcome. All right, let's go back to the energy for a minute. When you feel peace in you, and you feel good, and you're a little bit more happier, life is a lot more better, and better that means better situations gonna come to you, right? You're gonna attract better things. What I'm talking about is older mankind. This is written in scripture in Genesis. This was the, the, the story of creation. In Genesis 1, they talk about this. So this is older mankind about light attracting likeness. So if you feeling good and you know you on the right path and you know that you can stay clean and sober when these tests come up or something come up it's okay something come up and knock me down and I felt good yesterday I try to quickly get past it so I can feel good again that makes sense I don't be dragging in this stuff no more you know and it says that faith and uh, sincerity of both of you and your husband will be put to the test. It's not a, I'm going to talk about just one little simple test that always happens for newcomers. You get clean and sober. You go into meetings. You're going to need a higher power. Because one day, you're going to be alone. All by yourself. I promise you, you're going to have to go through this test. And you're going to run across a situation where it's going to be some alcohol or some drugs, and you're going to be alone. 
what you gonna do to pass that test? Mm -hmm. What you gonna do? You will be tested on your recovery. Are you gonna pass it or are you gonna fail it? Anybody been around here that's uh, got any clean time at all? I don't care if it's over a year. You know you've been tested. I've been in a situation like that. I told y'all right quickly, I was up to St. Jude's. I had like six months because I stayed there a year. I was walking, I was good. I was the big, big book six month gyro in there. I got the six month cookie, you know. I'm walking up say, uh, over to North Avenue Training Station. They told me I just left a group the day before. They were talking about a guy who picking up, picked up some, some, uh, you know, drugs off the ground. And, and the guy was there. Our instructor said, "Do not touch no alcohol. Don't even put it in your hand. It changes your whole physical energy. Don't touch it. Please don't touch it." They told us that I was sitting right in the group. And I was saying, y'all fools for touching that. You know, my turn to share. <laughs> <laughs> y'all fools, don't touch that stuff. You don't, man, I would never do that. The next day, I was walking through the train station, and you know, I'm still in the habit because I've been homeless for a lot of years. <laughs> I'm still looking down on the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, so I looked on the ground, I seen the package. <laughs> Got three of them in there. Little rocks. <laughs> <laughs> They had just told me not to do it, and I shared to the other guy about him doing it. Don't do that. <laughs> I had it in my hand. In my hand. And I knew it wasn't too smart. Mm -hmm. Like the book said, this is not cool at all. You're supposed to be in recovery. Only thing that came to my mind was the serenity prayer. Now, I had six months clean. I've been saying the serenity, serenity prayer, I don't say it over 600,000 times. Every meeting, every time I'm in a situation, I can say the serenity prayer, I knew it. I held that drug in my hand. I said, G -g 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 -g. I couldn't even get it out. I couldn't even get God out. I said, wow. I got scared. I dropped that packet and I stumped it so nobody else could get it. And I said, God, grant me serenity <laughs> to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can. I couldn't even say the serenity prayer when I had it in my hand. That's how I know. You're going to get tested. You will be tested. All that stuff you going out here not doing, I hope it don't show up when you get tested. Because you will be tested. Sitting at home in your new apartment, get tested. Okay. Then we read another one, faith and, all right. It's faith and sincerity of both of you and your husband will be put to the test. You read that right, Paul? All right. See, y'all think it's, it's kind of hard to talk and read and then have to talk some more mm -hmm. and then go away from them. They got to come back and find out where you're at. These workouts should be regarded as part of your education, your spiritual, mental, and physical education. For thus, you will be learning to live. See, we don't come in here and all of a sudden you're in recovery and whammy, you got it. You have to go through everything, every day, every situation is teaching you how to live. All right. You will make mistakes, but if you are, if but if you are earnest, they will not drag you down. Instead, you will capitalize them. A better way of life will emerge when they are overcome. Soon we get past some of these defects. Soon as we get past these challenges, we will have a better way of life. You have to go through them. I find situations all the time that I be wanting to quit, but I just keep on going. You know, I was, uh, we have a situation up here, and I just give you my experience, that we, we apply for grants. There's a lot of work. Then you get the grant, right, Wayne? They promise you the money. And you go out and do the work. Then they give you half the money up front. <laughs> then trying to give you the other half, they cut it down two thirds. That make you want to quit. Then you gotta question yourself, are you doing it for the money? Are you doing it for the love of the recovery? Your integrity gotta come in. That makes sense? And you can't keep on trudging. But a lot of people quit. But by me having this in me, I don't have to quit. But do do I, am I human enough to experience the opportunity to question which way I wanna go? Yes. You're supposed to be able to question, shall you go to the left or shall you go to the right? And I know if I went to the left, if I'm feeling bad about what they did, if I react to what they did, now I'm feeling really bad. 
It's not going to make me feel better. It's going to make me feel worse. But if I'm feeling great and keep on pursuing and doing my mission, more greatness is going to come to me. It's how you think and how you feel that's going to attract what you really desire in life. Go both ways. How you think and how you feel negatively is going to attract more negative situations in your life. You're going to be one big, beautiful, negative nothing. But that's okay if that's what you desire. But that's what they're telling these women right here. Stop being negative. Next one. Some of the snags you will encounter are irritation, hurt feelings, and resentments. Your husband will sometimes be unreasonable and you will want to criticize. Starting from a speck on the domestic horizon, great thunder crowd, thunder clouds of dispute may gather. These family dissensions are very dangerous, especially to your husband. Often you must carry the burden of avoiding them or keeping them under control. Never forget that resentment is a deadly hazard to an alcoholic. We do not mean that you have to agree with your husband whenever there is an honest difference of opinion. Just be careful not to disagree in a resentful or critical spirit. Some of the snags you will encounter are irritation, one, hurt feelings, two, and resentment. Negative emotions, right? Your husband will sometimes be unreasonable and you will want to criticize him. That's going to add more negative situations in the home. Start from a speck on the horizon, a little dot way out there. Great thunder clouds of dispute will gather. It just started, you know what I'm saying, growing and growing and growing until bam, here we got this big old fight going on. The family dissensions are very dangerous especially to your husband. Often you must carry the burden of avoiding them or keeping them under control. So they're telling the women, like, all this negative stuff is going on, you're going to have to learn how to avoid this kind of stuff or keep it some kind of under control. Under control is very important. Because now I'm a person now that, to me, meditating is one of the most rewarding things I have in my life today. I really, really been doing it for the like the last two two years maybe. I've been really meditating before I go to bed at night. When I start start studying Neville Goddard, I start taking his suggestion about meditating and and doing it. And it's been what three years now. I've been doing it for three years, and I have honestly, honestly, I tell people we gotta let them step on this. I tell people that I have honestly grew in me. An area of zone of really peace and serenity. I have it in me now. I really do. Sometimes situations at my house or the job or stuff can get out of hand. I can just go in my office and get into that zone, and it all just go away. It just go away. I don't have to respond to everything. Talk breakdown. Whoop de do. My pickup and other truck been doing it all right anyway. You know, it's, it's no, I don't have to do, I can, I can I avoid it. What they say, uh, I know how to uh, avoid it or keep it under control. I know how to relax and whatever, I, even my internal thoughts. Sometimes like you can be in the office or you can be to yourself so working at your desk or wherever you are, riding your car, and a, just a negative situation happened 15 years ago between an ex, you know, but coming to your mindset. And you could take that and turn that into a thundercloud with no help. It's just in your own head. I know now how to relax and breathe and let that just go on by the business. Don't even let it uh, entertain it. So we're learning this stuff, and that's what they're teaching these women. And they have to teach these women this. The, you know, they have to teach these women this is because they really live in a horrible situation. You know, you live in a real alcoholic. That is one of the worst places to be. 
So they have to learn some kind of spiritual life. We're not talking about just praying all the time. We're talking about putting this stuff into action. Doing some things to keep you happy. You know, I, I know, because I come from a, 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 a family. My mother is just as messed up as my father was. <laughs> she don't know it. <laughs> but at the end of the day, all that insanity that she lived with, she grew to it. She grew to it. You know, and, and they're teaching these women how to cope under the worst conditions you probably can cope under. That makes sense? Alright, it says that never forget that resentment is a deadly hazard to an alcoholic. The four steps say resentment is the number one offender. It kills more alcoholics than anything. Do you want your husband to relapse? Keep being resentful. We do not mean that you have to agree with your husband whenever there is an honest difference of opinion. Just be careful not to disagree in a resentful or critical spirit. I think um, we probably need to stop here. I thought I was going to get to the end of the chapter. But I was advised that wasn't, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. No, that's too much to go. But my point is, it goes back to what I was saying earlier that I didn't know this was in here. I'll be the first to say that. that. And I couldn't understand when I was doing it before why they telling women don't do this and don't do that, don't be angry, don't be that. I didn't kind of get that, you know what I'm trying to say? But now I do. In order to save them and for them to have some kind of peace and serenity, they really need some spirituality. The alcoholic know he need it. You know, you hit rock bottom. You know, I was talking to some people yesterday, right? And they couldn't, and, and they were godly men. They were Christians, you know, like in, in the Bible study that they've been in the Bible for like 10, 15 years of peace. It's the same Bible study with all men. And they developed a really, really a Christian attitude. So they were asking me, do you, they know that I believe in God, but they were talking about other clients. Do they really believe in God, you know, like oh, Jesus Christ, and they were saying stuff like that. I would say, look, I can tell you one thing, because then none of them traveled the, the path that we did. I said, all my clients, the clients and people that I run across in AA and NA and places like that, we all hit rock bottom in life. And what I mean by rock bottom, everything worthwhile to us was taken from us. We had nothing. And then if you look at our bodies, you see them out there on the streets, and, and they ain't bathed, we, we haven't bathed in a month. You know, we pan out, we standing in a soup line, we're living in bad shelters, unsanitary position, the places and this horrible lifestyle. We scribble down to nothing. Nothing. At the end of the day, when you that low, when you down to nothing, and you start coming up, and you get a year clean or something, a two year clean, and you look back, and you re-examine that nothing in, that's all you had was God. That was nothing else to have. The only thing kept you beaten and living, and it wasn't Robert. I was doing everything I could to kill me. The only thing that was making me a they alive and exist with God, period. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else but holding us alive but God. It wasn't you. With that song, it wasn't me. <laughs> you know, he was cheating or something. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. <laughs> he was red headed caught. Yeah. You know? But my the point is that's all we had. You can't take it lightly. Because I hear people all the time how grand they was and all this and all that. Come on now. Yeah. You wasn't nothing but a slime on a rock like me. <laughs> then at the end of the day, the only thing that was standing was God. Nothing else. Thank y'all for a good meal.